cataractcoach.com. Posterior capsule break during hydro dissection. You have a capsular block syndrome, which leads to a blown up posterior capsule, and then posterior assisted levitation. So our operating surgeon here is Dr. Ahmed Samir from Egypt, and you can see there's the cataract. This is using a microscope that has an overlay to give you an idea of where to make the capsular axis. So that all goes routinely, starting off here with just the forceps, and following that guide, he can create a very nice capsular axis. Now what we're gonna count on this case is the capsular block syndrome. So when you have the hydrodissection going on and that pressure wave that goes across builds up too much pressure between the poster capsule and the lens and it doesn't have a room to escape, what can happen is you can blow out the capsule. So watch carefully, he'll do some hydrodissection and I think the capsule's already blown out just like that. Now this can happen to anyone. And you can see those horizontal lines there. He's probably aware of this too. So he's getting that focus just right. So what do you do in a case like this? You need to get the lens nucleus up out of the capsule bag. You want to prevent it from going south or going into the vitreous cavity. So he's putting in more viscoelastic here, but that posterior capsule is already split down the middle. Now, how do you avoid this? Well, obviously using less pressure during hydrodissection, make sure you have a sufficiently large capsule rexus. After you have one fluid wave, letting some of that fluid out, tapping the center of the nucleus, but there you can see the outline of the broken capsule. And already the lens nucleus is falling down into the vitreous cavity. So what he's gonna do is something that I do not advocate doing, but I wanna show you. And in his hands it works. This is a posterior assisted levitation. So a needle's going in through the pars plana in order to push that nucleus back up into the anterior segment. So this needle's going pars plana into the vitreous cavity and holding or pushing on that nucleus, supporting it. This is that PAL technique, posterior assisted levitation. It's been described for many years in the, in the literature and the nucleus can be brought up here. Now, for me, this is a high risk procedure. And what I'd advocate instead is if the nucleus is already falling into the vitreous cavity, if you have a vitroretinal colleague who can help you, let the nucleus go. Let it go back into the vitreous cavity, and then your colleague can help you do a full pars plane of vitrectomy, pars plane lensectomy, and it'll have a beautiful outcome. Now, here for Dr. Samir's hands, he does a great job, and the case turns out very nice without any issues or complications. So notice now he's operating in the anterior chamber. Don't worry about the coronal epithelium at this point and also having a sufficient amount of viscoelastic behind the nucleus. You don't wanna have any vitreous prolapse and you don't want these pieces to come forward. So here, watch now, with the AC collapsed, the vitreous did prolapse. So you're gonna to have to clean up a lot of this stuff here. He's enlarging his incision. And then now you wanna remove as much of the leather material as you can. You can use also an Iowa scaffold procedure. That's putting the lens in first before removing all this material. You can also use a lot of viscoelastic and try get it out. So now you can really see the outline of the capsule break and now more viscoelastic is being used and he's gonna um, express these pieces out of the enlarged incision just with that big viscoelastic wave. And that certainly works very well. It's a safe way of doing it. And again, there's still the question is how much vitreous has prolapsed into the anterior segment? So you're going to need to do an antivitrectomy. You're going to need to clean that up, do some triamcinolone to stain the, land, the, the prolapse vitreous. But this technique, look, he's using a lot of viscoelastic. I get it. And viscoelastic is, is great. Obviously, it costs money, but it's, as you know, viscoelastic is much cheaper than vitreous. So he's trying to minimize the amount of vitreous prolapse. And then here we go. Looks like a small gauge vitrector and going in to clean up any more lens material and then also clean up the prolapse vitreous. You really need to make sure that there is no vitreous prolapse to the front of the eye. You also, in these types of cases, want to look very carefully in the posterior segment, make sure there are no retained lens pieces. You can put on an indirect ophthalmoscope in the operating room and look yourself. You can check the next day, or you can send your patient to the vitreous colleague if you have one, and they can check for you. But very important to know here how to clean this up. Remember, you have two settings, and this setting to remove cortex is irrigation, aspiration, then cutting, IA cut, and to remove the prolapse vitreous, it's irrigation, cut, and then aspiration. And if you are worried about removing cortex and you don't want to inadvertently engage, engage the cutter, you can actually just using these two 
the bimanual vet tractor setup, use the setting of cortex removal on your phaco machine, and therefore the cutter will never engage. But I think you have the foot control to be able to do it in the vitrectomy setting. So it's looking pretty clean. There's still some lens cortex that should be removed. And so it's going to switch hands probably to get full access here. And again, you need to check for entry site breaks where you poked in with the pars plana with the needle. You're not out of the woods yet with this case. These patients with an open or ruptured poster capsule also have a much higher risk of endophthalmitis, a higher risk of cystoid macular edema, a higher risk of retinal break or detachment. So you must watch these patients very closely in the post-op period. Now, I know the follow-up, Dr. Samir has told me this patient did very well with a normal visual outcome and no complications in the retina. So the retina did not develop macular edema, there was no infection, and there were no breaks or detachments either. So everything fortunately turned out very nicely for this patient. So Dr. Samir had a beautiful save here. Again, for my preference and my comfort zone, I have so many great vitreoretinal colleagues here in Los Angeles that if this happens, I would prefer to let the nucleus keep falling back in the vitreous cavity. I then clean up the anterior segment. You can send the patient to your retinal colleague, either aphakic, or if you really clean up the anterior segment, you can go ahead and put in a sulcus lens, hopefully with some optic capture. And now we can take a look and see the extent of the break. Look at the anterior capsular rim. Let's see. It looks like it did radialize. So here comes the lens. Lens is going to go inside the eye. What kind of lens do we have here? Yep, three-piece acrylic lens. Nicely uh, put in the eye. Get that dialed into position. And get that trailing haptic flipped over to the correct orientation. There it is. Again, you can put these haptics in the sulcus, orient them 90 degrees away from any of those capsule, anterior capsule breaks, and then you can tuck the optic through the capsular rexus, and this should do uh, very well in long term. There's the triumph syndrome, good job, putting that inside the anterior chamber, and you can see there's no vitreous prolapse. This is a very successful case. If you have any doubts, you can again put in the bimanual vitrector setup. At this point, I'd lower the infusion pressure or the bottle height, just to make sure that lens keeps stable and doesn't get pushed around too much. Because remember, it's only being supported essentially by those haptics in the sulcus. And uh, remember, the rex is not fully intact here. So nice save at the end of the day. Thank you, Dr. Ahmed Samir from Egypt for sending a beautiful case. That's posterior assisted levitation, the PAL technique. If you want to try it, hey, it's up to you. But it's just not in my comfort zone. Thanks so much. Bye now. Thanks for watching these videos. And remember to go to cataractcoach.com and sign up for a free daily email. We'll send you an email every day with a great video like this and other surgical pearls that'll make you a better surgeon.